Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. Today we want to explore this. Yeah? Here I have a magnet, 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 <laughs> magnet. Here I have a paper clip, and if I come in close, zack, yeah, we see there must be a force. Yeah? There must be a magnetic force inside a so-called air gap. Yeah? And this is actually what we try what we try to calculate. These are pretty strong magnets. Here, a little screw. Book. All right. So, okay. Okay, let it stick there. <laughs> forces, forces here. It's not, it's pretty strong magnet like that. Yeah. Forces in air gaps. How big are they? How big are they? So this is, our our case yeah so this one of those is maybe a magnet or maybe not it doesn't really care the main thing is we do have a, a magnetic flux there okay we do have a magnetic flux and this magnetic flux is passing through the whole arrangement and we do not take into account any stray fluxes or something like this stray flux is a flux which is somehow outside and we say this gap is small enough that we have it almost uniform okay so here we have the the magnetic flux and this might be done by, for instance, permanent magnet. Then one of those two things is the permanent magnet. Huh? And here we have a certain gap in between, called this gap S. Yeah, this is the gap S. And we have a certain area. And now we come to the point where I said, all right, we don't consider stray stray fields because actually we say that the field here and here they're looking almost the same yeah so that the, the flux density and so on they are the same they're distributed at the area a so our our flux density in i call it fe because i think it's iron okay iron is the magnetic flux phi divided by the area a and I also say B in air yeah, is phi divided by A. So we're not considering some extension of the field and so on. This is what I meant with stray. And if the gap is small enough, that's a valid assumption. Right? So that's equal BFE. So we only have one flux density, I say. Right? However, we have different materials. That's clear. Right, we have different materials, so actually we have two different field strengths. Yeah? So we have here HFE, field strength in iron. Yeah? This is B divided by mu zero multiplied by mu R. Yeah? Because actually what we had was, a, was this relation that B equals mu multiplied by H, and this mu, this was mu zero multiplied by mu r multiplied by h, right? This was the relation, yeah, this mu r was relative permeability. And, well, that's it. Huh? And in air, b divided and technically also mu and mu r. But somewhere I should have this somewhere here. That's mu r of air, 1.0000004. I said six zeros, six zeros at four. So it's mu zero. I really don't care about those somewhere in the back commas. Uh, no. Yeah. But mu r, we said from, from, from r, high. Right? So this is pretty, pretty high. Uh, really high. So it's, I don't know, 1,000, 10,000, maybe 100,000, yeah, mu r of iron. 
So actually what what is then the case, if this is really big and this is really small, that the field strength in iron is much smaller than the field strength in air. Hmm? Now we make an experiment. Huh? We know here yeah, our energy density one half B H yeah? and the energy in the magnetic field which is stored in the magnetic field was one half B H multiplied by the volume. And now we really make an experiment. Yeah? We say this side is coming a little bit closer to the other side. So we are reducing the gap. We are reducing the gap by a small tiny value called ds. Okay. We are reducing this gap by the small ds. So what energy was originally stored in this, in this gap? In this air gap. Yeah? The energy stored in this air gap, WA for air gap, yeah, was one half multiplied by B multiplied by HA. Yeah? And that now we need the volume, and the volume is A multiplied by S. Yeah? So this is the volume. The original one. This was the air gap. And now I'm reducing this air gap. Yeah? So I'm reducing, I have this delta D VL, this small amount I'm reducing, yeah, is one half B HL multiplied by A multiplied by DS, because I only see this little volume share here. Uh, this is the thing which the air is now getting smaller. Okay, the air content is getting smaller because simply this is this is the amount which is getting smaller. However, I only ha also have energy in in the iron, and the iron is energy is getting bigger because here this delta work in Fe is one half B multiplied by HFE, uh, this ferrum, uh, multiplied by A multiplied by DS. This is what I'm losing in the air gap. This is what I'm gaining in the iron. Uh, and what is the total loss, let's say? The total loss is what I'm losing in the air gap minus what I'm gaining in the iron. So we have one half air gap. Air gap. Here I was <laughs> Luft. Air is Luft in German. And the usual abbreviation when I teach this to my pupils is Luft. L. So sorry for this. One half B HL a ds minus one half b hl hfe of course a ds All right so let's what is remaining is the air of course HR minus HFE. Right? That is that is the difference. Okay? This is what we see. And then we of course know the work hmm, equals the force multiplied by the length where the force is working, yeah? Newton meter, that's joule. Yeah? And of course, if we only have a small amount of work, 
we have a force multiplied by a small amount of, of way. Yeah? So this means actually our force F equals this dW divided by dS. This simply dW divided by dS is F. Huh? This is simple. Huh? Okay, now let's see. This dW we have already wrote here. So it's one half B A dS H in the air minus H in the iron. And then multiplied by 1 divided by dS. Gray one. Now, zack, zack, this is gone. All right, so I have now 1 half B A. And now I will use these forms. Yeah? So the, the A is B divided by mu zero right? minus. B divided by mu zero mu r. Right? Now, let's see what the result is. I also, so it's one half multiplied by B multiplied by A multiplied by B divided by mu zero. And in we have one minus one divided by mu r. So actually, actually we end up with uh, b squared a divided by 2 mu zero and 1 divided by 1 divided by mu r. Yeah. Since we have the situation that our mu r is much bigger than 1, this means 1 divided by mu r is much smaller than 1 and is almost 0. Yeah. I can forget about this. Yeah? So actually what we can say is F force equals, I'll write it black, B squared A divided by 2 mu zero. And this is the form you usually learn and read somewhere. That's the magnetic force. Yeah. I could teach this. This is the magnetic force. Yeah. Learn this. Yeah. Now you know why. Yeah. Yeah. Now you know why, how, how this can be derived. Why there's mu zero and this mu r is nothing inside and so on. Yeah. Well, it would be inside, but it, since it's that high, it's not. If mu r would be, let's say, 2, then I only have half of the force. Yeah. So if mu r is not that high, then I have to consider it. But since mu r is very high usually, I do not have to consider. Uh, because this is really, really small then. Forces in air gaps. Right? So this is why the magnet sticks to something. Magnet, permanent magnet, is producing a certain amount of of, of flux density, and this flux density is then producing a force, depending on the area, of course. But there are not only forces in air gaps, there are also forces in, uh, in, in, in conductive materials. So if there's more current, there's another current, so there are two wires or something like this, yeah? two wires, current, in a wire, yeah, there are forces in between. Yeah. This is what we are going to talk about in the next video. So next video we are going to talk about forces in current carrying wires. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.